They call this the Dead Sea of Canada, Little Manitou Lake. It's so salty that only microscopic creatures can live in it. Rivers flow in but not out. Evaporation makes it even saltier. Farmers have long known not to plant crops on the shore. But there is a spa, like the real Dead Sea, and it's been here for decades. In the 20s and 30s, the people came from all over to visit Manitou Lake, uh, and they came and, and healed themselves in the water. They bathed in the water, put the mud on themselves for exfoliants, and it was very much a, uh, a health place. Saltwater lakes are well known in this part of the world. And aside from this one, where tourism and taking the waters has been popular for decades, they're seen as somewhat of a nuisance. But new research is showing that a lake like this with its saline waters may actually be performing a very valuable service. Researchers at the University of Regina say that such alkaline lakes, and there are hundreds here, absorb atmospheric carbon. Their complex chemistry stores the carbon in mud as a stable element. More than a million tons a year, up to a third of the vast carbon dioxide output of Saskatchewan's farms. Best of all, it's an entirely natural process. We don't have to do anything other than just make sure that we don't drain them, you know. Um, I think lakes have really been um, underappreciated in the carbon budget just because total surface area relative to oceans and forests they're not huge, um, but the rates at which they are processing carbon is far, far faster than, say, the open ocean. As oceans become more acidic, they sop up less carbon. These bodies of water are crucial then, and not just here. The Caspian Sea, the largest salty lake in the world, has similar chemistry. Environmental activists say this is exactly the kind of science that should transform our approach to the world's carbon problem. We need good applied science to figure out how we, how we actually achieve this. You know, if we can use the applied science to, to set out what we need to achieve, then we can hand over to the economists and the social scientists to figure out you know, the, the detail of how we get there. So far, governments aren't doing much with this research, but there's excitement building over how it might be applied if Canada ever draws up a plan to deal with emissions and atmospheric carbon and the salt lakes of the North American prairies could just be part of it. Daniel Lack, Al Jazeera, Little Manitou Lake.